Hello everyone, welcome to another session. Today's session we will be discussing about the components that are involved in synthesis of a protein. We are otherwise calling it as a protein synthesizing machinery. Okay? So majorly in protein synthesis we need two components. One is the ribosomes, the seat of protein synthesis and number two RNA. All the three types of RNA are involved that is mRNA, rRNA and tRNA. Okay. Apart from these major requirements you may also require other proteins like initiation factors, elongation factors, termination factors and a whole family of proteins but majorly we need ribosomes and the three types of RNAs. In today's session we will be discussing about the role of each component in detail. Now let us begin with ribosomes. So we all know ribosomes are the supramolecular complexes, non-membrane bound structures, which are made up of ribosomal RNA and around 80 types of proteins. Ribosomes are the supramolecular complexes which are non-membrane bound structures found in both prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. They are called as supramolecular complexes because there are combination of two macromolecules the RNA and the protein. RNA forms the framework for a ribosomal structure and proteins are involved interwoven with the RNA. Now we also knew that in prokaryotes we have 70s type of ribosomes whereas in eukaryotes we have both 70s type as well as 80s type of ribosomes. So but in prokaryotic cells 70s type are involved in the protein synthesis in eukaryotes 80s type are involved in the protein synthesis. Now, Generally when the ribosome is not involved in making a protein, it lives in a non-functional state or a dissociated state. Every ribosome whether it is 70s type or 80s type is made up of two subunits. One is the larger subunit, the other one is smaller subunit. Now, in a non-functional state both are in a dissociated state when they are not involved non-functional means when they are not involved in making a protein. In the non-functional state both the subunits are not attached to each other they are found in a dissociated state. Like this. Suppose this is your larger subunit and this is your smaller subunit. Okay? This is the status of the ribosomal subunit when it is not involved in protein synthesis. But whenever an mRNA comes into the cytoplasm, this mRNA will attract the protein synthesizing machinery especially the ribosomes. Now it is these subunits that comes and binds to the mRNA to associate together like this. Yes. So now this forms the functional status. Functional ribosome 
in its association associated state now whenever your ribosome is bound to the mrna it appears to have three slots for the trnas let us discuss about it a little more in detail so when your mrna is attached with the ribosomes there appears three slots within this ribosome the names of these sites or the slots are the e p and the a site so once they are associated together you find the three slots as e p and a site within a ribosome what is this e p and a site let's begin with a a stands for amino acyl site it is into this site every time a new trna comes and binds that is i'll simply call it as the incoming trna which is carrying a fresh amino acid charged trna we call it as any trna with a who carries which is carrying an amino acid is otherwise called as a charged trna now this charged trna is entering into through the into the ribosome through this amino acyl site now coming to the second one the p site p site states stands for peptidyl site it is in this site the peptide bond is formed the p site now what is this e site e stands for empty it is through this site the uncharged trna or the outgoing trna i'll call it as the outgoing trna moves out of ribosome okay so here there are three sites in which each site is playing a role in giving a slot to the trna so for you to understand i am making one more picture of this ribosome in its functional state like this suppose this is your uh, trna at the 3 prime end it can hold one amino acid and the 5 prime end is free over here like this the trna is having at the amino acid at the 3 prime end and from the anti codon loop it will bind to the mrna so as you can see here the a site the p site and most of the e site is within the smaller subunit only the e site now this is your incoming trna incoming trna it will come and occupy this slot whereas the trna which is already occupying this place
it has made few peptide bonds over here and it is trying to make a new peptide bond in this. A new peptide bond can be formed between the this side. This is the peptide bond formation site. Now the empty tRNA which has already occupied this site, site is ready to leave this place. So, this empty tRNA makes a way out from the ribosome through the E site. So, now I think you are clear with all the three sites, the E site, empty site where the outgoing tRNA moves out, P site is the site where the peptide bond formation takes place and A site is the site every time a fresh charged tRNA comes and occupies this A site. Chalo? This is about the ribosome and that is the reason as you can see from the image that is the reason why ribosome is known as the what is ribosome known as yes it is known as the factory of protein synthesis cellular factory for protein synthesis right yes now we'll talk about the three types of rnas